My name is Jerry Magutu. I'm an educator, practitioner, trainer, consultant, and researcher since 1984 to date. I joined AAK first as a student member way back in 1981 while well, at the University of Nairobi Department of Architecture. Subsequently, became a graduate member 1984 upon graduation, and then a corporate member 1991, and uh, invited as a fellow in 2015. Now, the biggest lesson in practice um, thus far that I might want to say is that um, it's born out of uh, continuity. That has been exciting and fulfilling, learning from teaching, practice, training, consultancy, and research. The biggest hallmark in architectural profession is discipline, focus, commitment, and resilience as the hallmarks in architectural profession. And then, of course, you've got to have a purpose in life, aim to make a difference, perhaps, because life is short and needs to be lived with passion and intent. As a designers, we have a wonderful opportunity and a responsibility to create things that improve the lives of others. And this provides wonderful opportunities for practitioners to find very rich and meaningful careers. Part of it also is to plan, and here I mean long term. Architecture is not a job, it's a career. And it tends to mature after quite a long time. In fact, most of the maestros that we learn from matured in their twilight years, meaning the 70s and above. And so it's important that we plan ahead, long term, and not short term. I might want to say that some of the interns that have gone through me would come in and would want to buy a car in the first month. They would want to buy a house. They really want to be in a hurry. And when I tell them it has taken me 20, 30 some years even to buy a car that is meaningful, they kind of laugh at me. And so it's this that I want to impart to them that it's a long term plan and it's got to have that persistence and patience. The other thing is to read, read, read. Read books, read magazines, read journals. Read anything that informs you on the architectural profession. It's very meaningful and very rewarding. Networking in building industry is equally very important to know who you're going to work with so that they can be able to make you realize the dream that you've come up with in terms of design. Of course, you've got to take care of yourself. That means that you've got to be physically, spiritually, mentally sound, so as to be able to withstand the rigor that's required in the architectural profession. Now, when I look at the profession, especially given my um, very many roles as a trainer, as an educator, as a researcher, as a practitioner, as a consultant, I see that the future uh, of architecture perhaps is much more different than what we were trained to do. With the rapid evolution of available technologies and the integration of them into the profession, the role of an architect is changing faster than it ever has before. The profession of architecture is one that dates back to ancient times with a profound impact on the built environment of civilizations all over the world. The evolution of the practice has been relatively slow. While technologies and styles have evolved, the fundamentals today are not all that different than they were historically. However, with the rapid evolution of available technologies and the inter integration of them into the profession, the role of an architect is changing faster than it ever has before. I believe that the best way to stay relevant in our changing profession is always be considering what the future holds and pushing ourselves and the boundaries of the profession. The core tenets of architectural profession traditionally has been, of course, interpreting client needs in terms of a brief, developing a design solution, submitting a design for approval from the local building approval agency, conveying the design solution to the contractor fire construction documents, and verifying that the construction is true to the documents provided. There are nuances to these responsibilities, such as code compliance and environmental considerations, 
But the core of our business is still solution-based with a focus on problem solving. Looking forward, while the tenets may more or less stay the same, there will be less of a focus on the drawing process of the construction documents and more of a focus on innovative solutions and how they affect as well as support the users of the space. In turn, clients are becoming more sophisticated and now demanding a higher level of understanding of the process and in some cases desire to be an integral to the completion. Luckily, technologies are also advancing, allowing a higher level of information to be easily conveyed and shared. Let me, for a moment, dwell a little bit on technological advancements. Technology is migrating into architecture more and more every day. The speed to market has increased significantly with the industrialization of construction, with companies now applying logistics via Google Maps to deliver materials to the job site quicker, along with the science of prefabrication to increase the efficiency of construction, which in turn delivers the project quicker and faster than ever before. While this is ideal from an operational and logistical standpoint, it also means that some of the traditional aspects of architecture, specifically the drawings, are going to fade away and the next generation of architects will have a whole new type of deliverables. Digital outputs, such as building information modeling, BIM, assist in achieving higher performing buildings by looking at regenerative design, renewability, life cycle costs, and app-based maintenance programs. We also anticipate that with the digital delivery of construction documents, they will no longer be plan checked by an individual, but by a program-based software, a virtual plan check of sorts. This will speed up the agency approval time, streaming the path from design to construction while reducing the margin for human error. The focus is shifting from pure architecture to an environment that is both architectural and user-focused to enhance the occupant's experience. Clients will be looking for ways to get the most out of their buildings with user apps and sensors that allow them to gather data to determine which spaces are truly utilized, which will drive the need to design for more or less space. Clients will also be using technology and data analytics to determine the life cycle costs of buildings, as well as forecast occupant experiences to drive future buildings and programs. With this heightened emphasis on technology, the role of the architect per se is soon steadily coming into question. While the human component of architecture can never be replaced, many of the once manual processes can. Architecture and its practitioners must be willing to embrace the migration towards a wholly digital design experience. Adaptability, flexibility, and early adoption of new technologies and procedures will ensure that the collaborative minds at the center of the profession remains a fundamental component of architecture as a whole. The future of architecture profession, therefore, will be as follows. In order to effectively adopt this technology-driven and technology-dependent future, we, as architects, need to shift our focus to the end-user experience, speed to market, the efficiency of programmed space, and the efficiency of construction. In addition to aesthetically beautiful designs, there will be more emphasis on how buildings operate and support the end-users and their offerer experience. For the architecture, the building is an extension of the client's business, a tool to enhance the occupants and the members of the community. Many architectural achievements throughout history have been driven by the art form and the ego. With the modern shift towards performance and the business necessity of creating a functional building for the client's need, the architect of the future must strike a balance between form and function, art and science, as well as technology and the soul. Only time will just tell just how balanced these concepts will be, but they are sure exhibiting a synergy that makes it a truly fascinating time to be an architect. Architecture profession is no longer influential as it used to be 
the case in the past. Hence, there is need for diversification and or specialization, such as landscape, urban design, research, academia, environmental specialists in acoustics, lighting, heating, and cooling, among others, or even into activism, because that is also an area that is opening up for architects to have a say. I think that pretty much is the challenge and the pointer as to the future of architectural practice and training as well. Thank you.